WWDC announced a new M2 MacBook Air, the new budget laptop from Apple for 2022. Apple is still selling the M1 MacBook Air at the time of this recording. So the question is, should you get the new M2 version or save some money and get the M1 version? So let's have a chat and I'll share my thoughts. A quick recap from WWDC, the new MacBook Air has a new design closer to the design of the MacBook Pro 14 and 16 inch models that currently have the M1 Pro and the M1 Max chipsets. Along with that design, the new MacBook Air inherited the notch, giving you extra screen real estate with a brand new bright liquid retina display and thin bezels and available in multiple different colors, including midnight, space gray, silver, and starlight. Now the new MacBook Air still has a super thin design just without the taper like this one right here as well as the comeback of MagSafe to free up the two Thunderbolt ports and 3.5 millimeter jack. The camera has been updated to 1080p finally, especially with the new norm of Zoom meetings and other video conferencing applications with the addition of spatial audio. With all these new and upgraded features, the star of the new MacBook Air, of course, is that M2 chip. The new M2 chip in the MacBook Air comes in an 8-core CPU up to a 10-core GPU and a 16-core neural engine. The M2 also comes with a high-performance media engine to increase the editing performance of 4K and 8K ProRes video. For even more details, I added a link in the description below to the WWDC Apple announcement. The MacBook Air M1 uses the older chassis, which isn't a bad thing. And what really makes this laptop shine is that M1 chip. The MacBook Air in my hands right here is not the M1. It is a 2018 MacBook Air that shares the same older chassis. I do have the Mac Mini M1 and the chipset is outstanding even without that high performance media engine for video editing. There is a lot in the new MacBook Air M2 that makes it an impressive machine. Apple is not taking any rest to improve their ARM-based M series of chipsets, making this very interesting. The debut of that M1 chip, in my mind, has been a success and has outperformed their previous Intel chipsets for everyday computing. Which brings me to my point, everyday computing. With the M1 chipset, everyday computing is still impressive no matter if you are surfing the web, checking emails, and working on office apps. The M1 chipset and the unified memory will be noticeably better than Intel chips that are equivalent to budget laptops and even this 2018 MacBook Air, which has been proven to be one or two steps behind my new Mac Mini M1 when it involves everyday tasks. For a simple budget MacBook Air, with the option of the M1 chipset that's still available, I personally would recommend it. Even if you are mostly doing everyday tasks and are editing 1080p or 4K footage with a simple timeline, once in a blue moon, it will still be up to the task. If you are looking for an even better deal, the Apple refurbished MacBook Air with M1 will be even cheaper, which I highly recommend and I've purchased products in the Apple refurbished section before that are just like new and comes with Apple warranty as well. The new MacBook Air M2 is currently going to be the first range of Apple computers with the updated chipset. With that high performance media engine built right into the M2 chip. And I would recommend it for the creator on the go that will be doing video editing. In this range, the budget MacBook Air I love the new design. I love that it has MagSafe, the updated webcam and the display. You won't go wrong with daily computing by any means. And having the newest Air with that distinct design upgrade and different colors will separate this from the older MacBook Airs like this one. When it comes to performance for everyday tasks, with specs aside, I don't think you'll notice much of a difference compared to that M1 chip MacBook Air. You would 
get a bigger jump in performance when you're comparing it to the older MacBook Air with an Intel chipset. Something that would put me over the top to change my mind and recommend the MacBook Air M2 more than the M1 version for everyday computing is the addition of extra display capability. The M2 version or the M2 chip still has the same limited display for dual displays. This means the display in the MacBook Air has to be one of the two displays, giving you only one output for an additional extra display. When you're using an M2 or M1, it's exactly the same. Using the display of the MacBook Air constitutes as one of those displays. And then if you have this in clamshell mode, because it has to use that MacBook Air, that one display is taken away, you'll only be able to connect to one extra display to work on, which sometimes isn't a bad thing. Sometimes having multiple displays can be distracting. Now I might be reading this wrong and at the time of this video, the MacBook Air M2 is not yet released. And once it does, if I'm wrong, I'll update you. As excited as I am to see the M2 chipset on the new MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro 13 inch, I am even more excited to see the other variants of M2 that will be launched, especially in a newer Mac mini or Mac studio. You found value in this video, you know what to do. If you wanna watch videos on the Mac Mini M1 to compare, click here or in the description below or click here to watch one of my latest videos. Be safe, stay awesome, and I'll catch you in the next one.